Hello again everybody and welcome back to the Stock Trek channel for another Rocket Lab Saturday. And on this Rocket Lab Saturday, we're going to go over what I think is a question that many of you have had. And that is, when will Rocket Lab be at the same level of SpaceX? When will Rocket Lab equal the equivalent of where SpaceX is at today? So what we're going to go over today, we're going to talk about the different comparisons of what it's going to take for Rocket Lab to reach the level of SpaceX, everything from what the company does and its products to its revenue to its market cap and its valuation uh, and to its, its future capabilities. And we're also going to talk about some upcoming catalysts for the stock as well as the company and much, much more on this Rocket Lab Saturday. So let's go. So without further ado, let's go into this Rocket Lab Saturday, which is going to be when will Rocket Lab reach the level that SpaceX is at today? So the first thing we're going to go over is basically the products and services that SpaceX and Rocket Lab deliver to their customers. Okay, so let's start with SpaceX. SpaceX offers rocket launches, so they're capable of taking customer payloads into space. They also have software as a service with their Starlink uh, satellite internet, global internet connectivity, and Starshield. And Starshield is basically a, a defense uh, software as a service for the governments, and that is based off of the Starlink satellites that they already have up in orbit. Uh, SpaceX is also capable of human spaceflight. They have the Crew Dragon capsule that takes up manned missions and, and cargo to the International Space Station. Now let's take a look at Rocket Lab. So Rocket Lab also does rocket launches just like SpaceX. Rocket Lab will also be human spaceflight capable in the future. They are not currently capable of that at the moment. Uh, Rocket Lab does not have software as a service in a way uh, of a global satellite constellation system. However, Rocket Lab does have software for space systems called Max Flight Software. Now, this software is something that is excellent for their customers as it gives complete control over the mission life cycle. So everything from mission concept development to spacecraft design to integration and testing of the products to operations, this Max Flight software that Rocket Lab offers is a space solution. So while it's not Starlink, while it's not Starshield, it is a start. So that is something that Rocket Lab does have. Now that we have an idea of what each company has to offer for products and services, let's go ahead and check out the most fun part, Five, the rockets. Four, three, two. All right, let's start off with SpaceX and their rockets. Now, SpaceX has several to offer. They have the Falcon 9, the Falcon Heavy, and currently um, kind of tweaking Starship. So Falcon 9 is considered a heavy lift rocket, okay? Now, Falcon 9 is capable of carrying about 22,800 kilograms of payload. In other words, 50,265 pounds of payload to lower Earth orbit. And that's just lower Earth orbit. Um, so that is pretty heavy, if you ask me, uh, for Falcon 9. But I guess it's just not heavy enough because then SpaceX gets the Falcon Heavy rocket, okay? The Falcon Heavy rocket is uh, basically similar to the Falcon 9, only it takes more. So uh, this payload that it can carry to lower Earth orbit 
is 63,800 kilograms or 140,660 pounds. So this is way more than the regular Falcon 9. This is the Falcon 9 Heavy. Now we are moving on to the Starship. Starship is what they would call the class of super heavy. I like to call it in a whole class of its own. And this is capable of carrying 100 to 150 tons as far as payload capacity. And it's fully reusable. So when this, you know, really gets going and they're taking interplanetary trips, this is going to be, well, it's huge. It is huge. All right, now let's compare Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab does not in any way have any heavy lift rockets. So nothing like the, the Falcon 9 or the Falcon 9 Heavy or the Super Heavy, but they do have a small lift vehicle that is the first reusable small launch vehicle, and that is called Electron. So what I mean by small launch is that their payload to lower Earth orbit, if you could recall, SpaceX's was like in the multiple thousands, right? So Rocket Lab's payload to lower Earth orbit is 300 kilograms, otherwise 661 pounds. So hasn't even quite hit the the thousand pound, right? So it's a small launch vehicle, but it's very successful. So don't let the size fool you. Now what I do want to talk about is a game changer for Rocket Lab. And that game changer is called Neutron. Now, Neutron is what's going to bring Rocket Lab on its way to competing at the SpaceX level. Now, here's where it gets better for Rocket Lab. Neutron is capable of lifting around 13,000 kilograms to lower Earth orbit. 13,000 kilograms, in case you're wondering, equates to about 28,660 pounds. Now we're talking. Now we're competing in the playing field with the likes of SpaceX. Okay, so this is a medium lift rocket. It's not necessarily termed heavy, but it, it's it's medium lift, and it can pretty much compete with some of those heavy lifters that are out there. So this is going to be really exciting. Neutron is currently in development. It has not flown yet. It's it's not available yet. They're working on it. But let me tell you what. When this puppy gets released, it's going to be a game changer for the company, and it's going to be a huge catalyst that's going to catapult Rocket Lab into becoming amongst the, the, the main players with SpaceX. Now, I'll get into the reason why this Neutron rocket is so important shortly. Okay, in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look at their revenue next. Now, this is going to sound brutal because we're comparing a company that has many different software services like Starlink that, that brings in massive revenues, and Rocket Lab doesn't quite have their own constellation yet to offer a, a product like that. But we're going to do it for the second comparison regardless. So we're going to go with last year's revenue because it's a full year's worth of revenue. Um, I'm sure the revenue has increased for both companies in this year. So we're going to go with 2022. In 2022, SpaceX's revenue was $4.6 billion, billion with a B, okay? And here we have Rocket Lab's revenue from the previous year in 2022. So they reported $211 million in revenue with an M, which basically was great for them. I mean, Rocket Lab pretty much tripled its revenue. But that is small in comparison to SpaceX's $4.6 billion. Now, this is where you have to keep in mind that SpaceX has received a lot of seed funding. Okay, they've had a lot of outside investors like Google and many other big companies and individuals in the beginning that really seeded SpaceX and gave it a, a huge boost in valuation and development capabilities in their rockets and software. Rocket Lab, just because its revenue may look small right now compared to SpaceX, doesn't mean that they can't catch up. And I'm going to go into that further on in the video. Now here's a graph showing SpaceX's um, 
basically their revenue sources, um, areas that have brought in the money from their inception to May 2022. Now, a lot of it came from, see, government contracts, uh, about 11 to 12 billion. Another 9 to 10 billion from fundraising from investors, Google, I'm sure, being one of them. Uh, and commercial launch revenue of about four billion, and then the smallest amount is coming from Starlink. But as you know, that's going to increase wildly. I'm sure. I mean, just take a look at this projection for SpaceX. Their satellite internet revenue, basically Starlink and Starshield, is in pink. Look at how it it just makes the launch revenue look dwarfed compared to it. So like I said before, many times in other videos, software as a service is going to be key for Rocket Lab to be competing with SpaceX. Now this is taking a look at Rocket Lab's last quarter revenue uh, of this year, Q2. Uh, so it's not their whole 2022 revenue, so, so please don't think that. But what I wanted to show you is where their sources of revenue is coming from, not necessarily how much at this point. We went over that earlier. So as you can see, the black is revenue from space systems, and the red is revenue from launch. So the main thing I'm pointing out here is that they are bringing in most of their revenue from space systems and a little bit from the launches. So most of the revenue is from space systems, not from government contracts or anything like that, like SpaceX has. So their revenue um, sources are a little bit different than SpaceX's revenue sources as far as where the majority of their money is coming from. Okay, and getting into the most valuable part, <laughs> literally, we're going to talk about the valuations of SpaceX and Rocket Lab. SpaceX was recently valued to be around $150 billion for a market cap. $150 billion. Again, billion with a B. Now, Rocket Lab's current market cap as of recently is $2.8 billion. But hey, at least we're in the billions with a B. Uh, we are a little bit behind, um, nonetheless, but it doesn't mean we can't get to that level that SpaceX is at, at that $150 billion level. And next up, we're going to talk about ways in which Rocket Lab can reach SpaceX's current valuation. As Peter Beck once said, Rocket launch capability is the keys to space. And when you hold the keys to space, you eventually get to open that door. And that door is Neutron. Now, Neutron is like a universal key. It's going to unlock all the doors for Rocket Lab to become on the same level as SpaceX. And the reason being is that earlier in the video, I described how much weight Neutron can carry to lower Earth orbit. We're talking about 28,000 pounds, aka 13,000 kilograms of payload to lower Earth orbit. Not only that, Neutron is capable of human space flight if need be. If they want to go that route, they can. And another thing is that the real revenue, okay, is going to come from government contracts and software. As you saw, um, SpaceX pulls in a lot of their revenue from government contracts. Now, the unfortunate thing is that a lot of the big paying contracts only go to heavy launch vehicles, such as Falcon 9. And Neutron is going to be a medium lift vehicle. However, there may be some exceptions. The government may go ahead and open up areas where medium lift vehicles can do some of the missions that they would normally give to the heavy lift. So we are going to see how Neutron is able to, you know, gain more contracts. Now, the big thing is, is Neutron will be capable of deploying so much more than what Electron could, meaning Rocket Lab can build their own constellation. Rocket Lab, as you know, 
they they are innovative they are smart the ceo is brilliant peter beck is a brilliant man and i don't want to compare him to elon musk because they are individuals they are both on different different you know levels different personalities and i do believe peter beck can get us there i believe peter beck is very smart he he is what he is very level headed and He's also very good at running the business and going to make it profitable. So I do have my horse that I bet on, and that is Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab to be the next big thing, okay? Now, I do think once Rocket Lab has Neutron and they're capable of putting up constellations, I do think Rocket Lab will put up a constellation of their own, the same way that SpaceX put up their constellation for Starlink and Starshield. Rocket Lab can do something along those lines. They can create software as a service that's going to generate massive amounts of income. So the the launch vehicle is the key, but the doors to, to amazing profits, I think, are going to be in their own Constellation system. So again, I do think Rocket Lab is perfectly capable of becoming as big as SpaceX, and I don't think that they're going to stop innovating. So the conclusion that we both have come to is that Rocket Lab can become just as big as SpaceX. Um, however, keep in mind that they did start a little bit behind SpaceX in their first commercial launches. I think once Neutron becomes capable, and I would put it at about, I don't know, a range of six years and we'll really start to see some massive changes. I would say between six and seven years, we are gonna see Rocket Lab grow exponentially. And 15 years from now, it, it could possibly be at the same level that SpaceX is at today. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let John Z know what you think as well because we are both uh, excited to hear from all of you and see how long you think it might take for Rocket Lab to reach where SpaceX is today. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for more Rocket Lab updates and video updates and much, much more under the handle Stock Trek Girl. Thank you all for joining me for another Rocket Lab Saturday. And until next time, be sure to live long and prosper.